The voltages employed in the following equipment are sufficiently high to endanger human life. Every reasonable precaution has been observed and designed to safeguard the operating personnel. Watches and rings should be removed when working around machinery and electricity. Operating personnel should be prohibited from tampering with protective devices. The power should be removed completely before making internal adjustments. Be prepared in case of an emergency. Make sure you know how to treat someone for electric shock and how to perform artificial respiration. In any field situation, the generator is the heart of the support system. It will be your responsibility to make sure the system is set up practically and efficiently. Each time you set up a field generator, you will face different site requirements and conditions. The following outline of basic principles and approaches will help you adapt to new situations and respond safely and successfully to the challenges of each site. There are eight steps to follow in making up and operating a field generator. A needs assessment and siting of the generator. Generator setup. Preparation for generator use. Field power distribution and connecting the load. Operating under normal conditions. Operating under unusual conditions. Daily inspection and maintenance of the generator. And troubleshooting. Prior to going on any exercise, ensure that you have the required technical manuals for all the generators. You should also be aware of the general electrical requirements for the exercise. This will allow you to bring a sufficient quantity of connectors, plugs, sockets, switches, electrical panels, circuit breakers, and electrical cable. Upon arriving at the exercise, confirm the camp layout with the Camp Sergeant Major. Then, do a walkthrough of the camp area to assess the location and electrical power requirements of various sections. As you walk through, note any special requirements, such as whether the welders, the kitchen, vehicle technicians, and so on, will require 120 volts or 208 volts, single phase or three phase. The ideal location for your generator is either an equal distance from all sections when the power draw will be similar in each section or closer to the section drawing the heaviest amount of power when there is a large variance in power needed among sections. To minimize voltage loss your cable should run no further than 300 meters or 500 meters in the case of large gauge cable. Choose a site that provides some concealment. Tactical situations will determine the amount of camouflage required, if any, for the generator, distribution panels, and connectors. Remember, a lot of noise and exhaust is produced by a generator, so some locations like near the soldiers' quarters may not be appropriate. It may be necessary to maintain a reasonable operating temperature in the area around the generator set by opening the flaps. Be sure the generator will be easy to get at for maintenance and daily servicing. It is important for the generator to be sited on a firm foundation with good drainage. Once the needs assessment is complete, begin setting up the generator. Follow the directions in the operator's manual for grounding the generator set. Be sure the ground rod is kept moist and is driven 2.5 meters or 8 feet to ensure a good ground connection. Contact with the earth does not guarantee a good ground. The soil type, moisture content, and soil temperature affect the efficiency of the grounding system. Do not operate the generator set until this has been done. Serious injury or death can result from operating an ungrounded generator set. If the site is semi-permanent, you may need to hook up an auxiliary fuel tank to provide fuel for extended running periods. In all cases, it should be arranged that transport fuels the generator daily. Using the operator's manual as a guide, review the technical principles of operation 
and be familiar with the main components of the generator. Also, be sure you understand what each of the controls and instruments on the generator does and where it is located. On this generator's control panel, there are two main areas, the operator controls and indicators and the malfunction indicator panel. Consult your operator's manual for detailed instructions on how to prepare and start the generator. Keep in mind the following considerations. Be sure you are using the correct fuel, diesel or gas, and the right grade and quantity of oil. Before placing the AC circuit interrupter switch or circuit breaker in the on position, ensure the correct phase and voltage is selected. Before starting the generator, perform the self-test procedure. Then, ensure all generator set access doors, except the control panel door, are closed. Electrical panels can now be dropped off near the different sections of the camp. Separate lines will run from these panels to various pieces of equipment in each section. To balance the electrical load on a three-phase generator, Add the loads for the various sections and divide the total into three equal phases. This demand should be balanced so that all three phases of the generator are operating at the same load. If the three phases are not evenly balanced, the generator may be damaged. The electrical panels used for field distribution generally have a total of four wires. Two single-phase 120 volt wires a ground wire and a neutral wire. That means both 120 volt and 208 volt services are available at the same panel. In semi-permanent locations that have a large electrical load, a single large cable with four or five conductors is normally connected to the generator as follows. The neutral conductor is white and is connected to the terminal lug labeled L0. The ground is green and is connected to the ground lug. The black wire is connected to L1. The red wire is connected to L2. The last wire is usually either black, red, or blue and is connected to L3. The voltage on the generator terminals between L0 and L1, L0 and L2, L0 and L3, is 120 volts each. The voltage between L1 and L3, L2 and L3, L1 and L2 is 208 volts each. The opposite end of this large cable is hooked up to an electrical distribution box. The box should be equipped with various sizes of ground fault interrupter circuit breakers when possible. Now that the load is wired to the generator, ensure that all circuit breakers are in the off position before starting the generator. Check your operator's manual for the correct starting procedure and make all the initial adjustments as indicated. Before starting the generator, make sure the AC circuit interrupter switch is in the open position or the circuit breaker is off. Rotate the master switch to the start position and hold it until the oil pressure reaches normal operating range, the voltage has increased to its rated value, and the engine runs smoothly. Don't crank the engine for more than 15 seconds and allow the starter to cool at least two minutes between attempted starts so it doesn't burn out. Remember, exhaust discharge from the generator contains deadly gases. Don't operate the set in enclosed areas unless the exhaust is properly vented to the outside. Wait until the engine has warmed up for five minutes before switching on the electrical load. Apply the load by putting the AC circuit interrupter switch to the closed position. Then check that the coolant temperature and oil pressure are at normal values. Adjust the voltage and frequency to the rated values. Press the ground fault circuit interrupter test push button. 
Then, press the reset push button and ensure the indicator is red. The frequency and voltage should still be at the rated values. If not, adjust them. Rotate the ammeter voltmeter transfer switch to each phase position while watching the ammeter. If more than the rated load is indicated in any phase, redistribute the load. Follow during operation maintenance as indicated in your manual. Check for leaks, damaged, loose, or missing parts in the generator housing, oil filter, drain hose, engine assembly, fuel system, and fuel water separator. Ensure all indicators and controls are intact and working. To stop the generator in normal circumstances, place the AC circuit interrupter switch in the open position to disconnect the load. Let the generator cool down by running for five minutes with no load applied. Then put the master switch in the off position. To stop the generator in an emergency, push the red emergency stop button and turn the master switch to off. When operating the generator in very cold or very hot conditions, where it is dusty or sandy, or if it is near salt water, provide as much shelter as possible and keep the generator clean. The generator can operate at altitudes of up to 1,220 meters without adjustment or reduction in load. For higher elevations, the kilowatt rating is reduced 3.5% for each additional 305 meters. For everyone's safety, notify all personnel before starting your daily inspection or any maintenance. Indicate clearly the time when the generator will be turned off and attach a note to the generator panel indicating that work is in progress. To begin your maintenance, check your fuel reserves. Remember, if the generator runs out of diesel fuel during operation, it will require bleeding the lines in order to restart it. If this occurs, the air must be removed before the engine will start or run smoothly. Then, check to ensure there are no broken or loose parts or fuel leaks anywhere on the generator. Be sure to drain any water from the fuel filter water separator. Check the condition of the oil filter. Inspect the oil level and check for any contamination. Check the radiator, hoses, and overflow bottle for leaks. The level of coolant and the fan belt for cracks or other damage. Check the exhaust system for leaks or other damage. Inspect the air cleaner assembly and hoses for loose or damaged connections. And if the generator is running, check the restriction indicator. Check the electrolyte level in batteries and inspect the cables and connectors for corrosion and other damage. Inspect the ground rod and cable for loose connections or other damage. Water the ground rod daily to ensure a good quality ground connection. Check the control box harness for loose or damaged wiring. Start the generator and check that all indicators are in good repair and are operating properly. In spite of your best maintenance efforts, things may go wrong. If nothing is obvious from checking your settings and indicator lights, use your troubleshooting guide. It works like this. Select the trouble or fault from the column on the left. Beside it in the middle column, you'll find the possible causes. To the right of that are the suggested remedies. When dismantling a field distribution system, remember the following. Turn the AC circuit interrupter switch to the open position. Wait five minutes with no load applied. Shut down the generator and disconnect the load cables. Disconnect ground cable 
and remove ground rods. When using an auxiliary fuel line, disconnect the line, drain excess fuel from it, and then store the line. Secure all generator set access doors and panels. Maintaining power in a field camp is an important task, one that your entire unit is counting on you to do safely and efficiently. Be sure to carefully read the operator's manual and familiarize yourself with your generator's controls and instruments. Follow all instructions exactly. There are no shortcuts to safety.